Hey guys, Feral here. Today we're going to talk about the NK65 and my build diary for it. This is my first time entering the custom keyboard space and I've got to say I really enjoyed it. So I went with an NK65 entry edition which includes the silicone dampener and I went for the fire colorway. As you can see, it comes with quite a nice case, and I can confirm this is really quite a sturdy case. In the box, you get a leaflet advising VIA support, and VIA definitely makes your life a lot easier, so I would recommend that. And it also comes with a cheap but a coiled cable, which is quite unusual. Also comes with a hell of a nice sticker. As you can see, the case is slightly recessed, so the board sits in there quite firmly. Now I really love the look of the translucent finish on the NK65 boards. It gives me that retro aesthetic of like the old video game consoles when they used to do like the Xbox Crystal Edition and you know, Game Boy when they did their translucent finishes, that kind of thing. It does have two very long rubber feet on which are raised at each end. And you can see the thick white dampening pad running all the way through. This definitely helps with noise reduction. Right, we need some switches. I went for the tangerines. These are a linear switch and I absolutely love them. The colour combination was just luck. A quick sound test. And you'll notice that spacebar doesn't sound great at all. So we'll get these switches removed and we'll start modifying the stabilizers and then we'll modify the switches themselves. The stabilizers are plate mounted so they do come off very easily. You just have to unhook them at the top of each stabilizer. I will pre-warn anyone getting into this hobby, every part of this is time consuming. Modifying the stabilizers, it doesn't take too long, but it did take me a few tries to get it right. Okay, once all the stabilizers are removed, we're going to separate the parts like this. We're going to dab these dry. They do have some factory lube on, which is a nice touch, but it's just not good enough. So we're going to dab them dry, and then we're going to clip the two protruding legs. There are four legs. The two protruding ones actually produce quite a bit of noise. So we are going to modify these stabilizers permanently. If you are uncomfortable with this, these plate mounted stabilizers are very cheap to replace. And here you can see at before and after. For lubricant, we're going to use Crytox 205 and we're going to do the inside of the outer stabilizer housing and then we're going to do the outside of the internal housing. We're just going to do a light coating all the way around. We're then going to do the stabilizer bar, which you want a nice thick coating going around the corners and where the actual pin connects like this. And again, we're going to repeat that on every stabilizer and then we're going to do a band-aid mod where the stabilizer meets the plate. 
These ended up being a little bit too thick, so I actually ended up using a more traditional plaster. And this really helps deaden that sound a little bit more and add a little bit of a low end sound to the stabilizer keys. Switch time. This is very time consuming, set aside an afternoon if you've not done it before, but we are going to separate each switch into their individual components. We're then going to use the same lube to do the two parts either side where the switch slides. We're then going to do the base of it. And then we're going to lubricate the spring, top and bottom, in and out. Like I say, this is a very time consuming process. It took me a good few hours. We're then going to lubricate the stem. Now as these are a linear switch, I don't mind, I do lubricate the legs. However, if these were tactile switches, then I would not lubricate the legs. We will also lubricate inside the stem. Prior to reassembly, A, make sure it's the right way. B, if you can, get some switch films. These really, again, they're not a necessary detail, but the difference before and after, it's definitely worth getting these for how cheap they are. They do add an extra layer to the sound. We're then going to reassemble the switch and do it 60 or 70 times more. If this is your first time doing this, I will link another guide to a YouTuber that I watched doing this, and that really helped me, and I hope it helps you too. Here you can see on the bottom switch, one of the pins is quite heavily bent. This is quite normal. They do just bend back into place, but you must be aware of this before putting them into the PCB as you can cause permanent damage. We're now going to put all the switches back into the board, carefully check in each of the pins as we go to make sure there's none that are bent, and if they are, we'll modify them. After this, it is just a case of putting the keycaps on. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope it's helped, a like goes a long way, and if you want to see this keyboard in action, my video before this is a b-roll and typing test, so feel free to jump on and check that out. Okay, thanks for joining me, have a great day, peace!